Iora Kotu Katoa. I'm Judy Hewitt. I'd just like to say that this talk does not contain just my own ideas, but those from many others, too numerous to list. Also, there are other presentations given at the conference that weave into this one. I'll reference these as I go through using purple text boxes. I hope that you'll be able to find the time to look at these ones as well. Recognising and dealing with cumulative effects is central to ecosystem-based management because there are very few places in the world today that are not multi-use and so have multiple stresses acting on them. Importantly for marine systems, not all the stresses originate in the marine area. And even for those that do come from marine activities, many of them can come from a long way away. For example, invasive species, fishing in one place affecting species in another, decreases in apex predators affecting both coastal and marine systems. Most importantly, even when land-based activities provide the stresses, recovery of marine species has to come from other marine areas. In the first phase of the challenge, a cross-challenge workshop with researchers from Biological Heritage, Our Land and Water and Sustainable Seas highlighted that not only did each domain try to manage its activities separately, despite the transference of effects from one domain to the next, but there are another number of other differences between the domains. For example, the amount of data available, management perspectives. It's also true that marine systems can suffer from effects being out of sight and not easily visible. Marine systems are also managed by multiple agencies. Often the agency objectives will clash and even within an agency, ecosystem domains are frequently looked after by different people with different aims and different tools. Partly this can be because laws, rules and policies may differ between systems but for all environmental systems, legislation constrains policies, plans and decisions. And in the estuarine and coastal areas, as Liz showed, there are numerous pieces of legislation. New Zealand also operates under case law, so an interpretation upheld or denied by an environment court judge sets precedences for the future. Now Liz and Eric have not only talked about these problems, but have been advancing some solutions in their presentation. Leaving aside these problems, marine systems are generally lacking in data. And as other speakers, particularly Simon and Jasmine have revealed, we really don't know how everything will respond to the multitude of stresses that our modern lifestyles create. So we have a lack of information and tools. And of course, this lack of knowledge leads to uncertainty. And that's a major problem for our management. As soon as a scientist says they're not sure what will happen, people respond in different ways. Or as Sean put it, their perceptions de depend on worldview and positionality. A policy planner might say, we can't take the risk of changing policy if you're not sure. A business person, you can't change our operations if the science isn't proven. An environmentalist might say, business can't put the environment at risk if the science says that might happen. And all of this is actually compounded by the issue of scale. For example, does the evidence provided match the scale at which the user will make decisions? Does the plan or policy provide for outcomes where they're actually wanted by people? But that's enough depression. Let's move on to what we can do. Well, to begin with, we can accept the challenges. We shouldn't ignore them. They're not just going to go away. We did try that with climate change and it hasn't worked too well. So from the beginning, Sustainable Seas has been researching solutions. In the first phase of the challenge, we focused on management and society problems with a series of workshops that looked at bringing management and society together. This came up with eight principles that highly align with the Sustainable Seas ecosystem-based management principles. But there are three that are more specific particularly treating the environment as a whole without jurisdictional boundaries, using a mix of regulatory and non-regulatory approaches, and importantly, taking quick actions to avoid, mitigate, or remedy cumulative effects. So post these principles coming out, 
a framework, the Aotearoa Cumulative Effects Framework, was developed and validated at a workshop with 58 people. So this uh, framework actually is about how you bring people together, how you find their visions, their goals, how you decide on the types of actions that might be worked out and what the possibilities could be. But there was a hole in the middle. There was nothing about how to assess and predict cumulative effects, which brings us back to lack of information. And that leads us to other work done by the challenge in both the first and second phase, some of which has been presented by Sam, Simon and Jasmine. There are two important points that I'd like to make here. We can make a lot of headway by reframing what is thought of as evidence. Do we actually have as little data as we think? Certainly that's true if we think of information as needing to be highly numeric. But relevant information can be so much more than that. And there have been many presentations on day two demonstrating the use of maturanga in local knowledge. Actually, I ran out of room to put them all up, so there's just two of them here, but there were a lot more than that. But basically, relevant information can be narrative, experiences, maturanga. It can be semi-quantitative, ecological theory, expert opinions, or it can be numeric. It's also important to realise that relevant information is not always easily measured or modelled. And if you're focused on measuring, on getting easily measured and modelled variables that don't actually relate all that well to what you actually need, it's not particularly relevant. Following on from the, the value of the local data is the recognition of the role of local stresses, values and history in influencing outcomes when managing cumulative effects. So it means that if we if we actually look at these things, we really need to be focused on, in on the, the local environment, what's going on there, what are the stresses, what are the values, what is the history that will control the degradation and the recovery. However, we're still going to be dealing with the unknown, which is why the work presented by Sean and Fabrice is so important. And one other thing that became apparent when we really thought about it is that there is actually a less risky way to manage activities. Rather than trying to decrease degradation and therefore needing to know all about how stresses interact with the local environment, we can actually focus on managing to promote recovery which we do know a reasonable amount about, as Rebecca has presented. So we'd like to put it to you that um, rather than managing based on nationally set limits or national goals, local recovery goals might be the way to go, and they can be achieved based on nuanced risk assessments. And what do we mean by a nuanced risk assessment process? Basically this, I'm not going to go all the way through this, but the idea is that there are three knowledge outputs, iwi hapu in green, local community in purple, and ecologists. The in-place knowledge uses and aspirations drive the targets to find the present and historic state, and all three contrib contribute to two potential action scenarios to be run. This may not be a simple solution, but it is a promising solution that everybody could be involved in. Finally, to kind of move and expand further out into the future, at the present, we were operating in a social system where disciplines and worldviews use different types of knowledge that may not talk to each other. The language used by the law, disciplines and worldviews may all be slightly different. All this can add to uncertainty and can result in plans, policies and decisions ending up in the environment court. And that in itself is a system which delays change. But all of this actually also highlights the importance of building the capacity of everyone to understand nature people connections and how to nav navigate different knowledge systems. And also, most important in these days are fake facts, when to trust and how to judge the value of knowledge. Thank you very much for listening to me. Namihi.